In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the most prolific killers that this planet has seen. It is the famous or rather infamous influenza virus. And believe it or not, but every year worldwide this virus kills around between 250,000 and 500,000 people. That's half a million of people who are killed by that. But that is nothing, nothing compared to this gigantic uh, pandemic in 1918, shortly after World War I, where there was an outbreak of influenza virus and worldwide, we don't, we will never know the exact number, but it is estimated that between 50 and 100 million people were killed by this virus. This is an incredible number. So let's have a look what this virus actually looks like and how it does its dirty deed. So here you see the, the structure of the influenza virus and uh, it looks a little bit almost like a sweet chestnut. It has a sort of a shell which is made up of, of proteins and lipids and in this shell there is the genetic material of this virus. Now, of course, it is a matter of debate whether a virus is a living organism or not, uh, but it's important to realize it has some genetic material. Now, in this case, this genetic material is uh, called RNA, ribonucleic uh, acid, and this helps the virus to replicate in the host cell. What you also see are these spiky things uh, on the on the outside on the envelope of this virus and these are these are proteins that are sticking out and what do these proteins do well they actually act like uh, some recognition mechanism these uh, spiky things uh, if i if i draw that uh, a little bit larger, these spiky things, then these proteins can interact with other proteins that are, for example, shaped like that, and that sit on the cell. And I'll show you in a minute uh, how this actually works. So this spiky thing, this, this, this blob on the virus uh, envelope can make contact with a corresponding receptor on the on the host cell and this is used to target cells and actually to make contact of the, the virus makes contact with the cell and uh, gets sort of gains entry uh, you can also look at that as almost like a key and this is the lock and when the key finds the lock then it gains entrance into the cell and it can do its dirty work. Now, how does this virus actually work? Well, first of all, the virus, as I said, makes contact with the host cell. So that is here the host cell. The virus makes contact with the host cell with these spiky things. So with these locks, with these keys that go into the lock. And you have to imagine that the, the host cell also has lots of, uh, of of receptor proteins sitting on its surface that then allow the virus the entry or the virus hijacks these receptors. Now when the virus uh, docks to the receptor it then is engulfed by these uh, by the cell. So the, the cell takes it up and in the cell plasma what happens is that these spiky things are removed. They are just, it's a little bit like uh, taking off the coat of the virus and actually this process is uh, also called uncoating. So now the virus, if you like, is pretty naked. Uh, it is just this, this genetic material that is then there. And this genetic material, this RNA, is transported into the nucleus of the cell. So that's the nucleus. The nucleus is, if you like, it's the commando central of the uh, cell. 
And in the commando central, once you once you hijack the central, uh, the, the the core of the cell, you can do whatever you want with it. And that is exactly what the virus does. The virus actually uh, does two things. First of all, it uh, it 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 copies its genetic material. It copies the RNA and makes more and more and more and more of this genetic material. And this material then, this RNA is then uh, processed in certain ways. There are things going on with this RNA. But then also some of the material, of this genetic material, is transported out out of the cell here, uh, sorry, out of the nucleus where the cell machinery lives. These are the so-called the ribosomes and the, the ribosomes, these are cell prote proteins. They are huge complexes and their job is to make new proteins. And that is a process that continues all the time in our cells. And that's good because uh, it, the, the cell always uh, needs new proteins. So these ribosomes are sitting there and they are just waiting for, for the job to, to make uh, some proteins. And now these, uh, the, the genetic material of the virus comes out and reprograms these ribosomes. So these ribosomes no longer make the cellular proteins, they now make the virus proteins. Loads and loads and loads of them. So in a way the the cell is now turned into a zombie. The, 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 the virus has taken over the cell. And what then happens is that these proteins, these virus proteins that are produced by the hijacked uh, ribosomes is transported to the cell membrane through a structure that's called the Golgi apparatus. And uh, the, the proteins that the, this virus tells the ribosomes to make is now uh, put on the on the, the cell uh, membrane here and you see these are the spiky bits. These are the spiky proteins that the virus needs. And at the same time also the lots and lots of genetic information that the virus produced inside the nucleus is transported out of the central, uh, out of the uh, commando uh, bridge, if you like, and is then transported to where these spiky proteins or are already sitting. And what you see here is that uh, it's, it's a sort of a boil forms. That is the genetic material in here, and outside is the are the spiky bits. And you can uh, very easily imagine that when it gets bigger and bigger, it forms like a sort of a droplet, and a new virus is generated, uh, a new virus is born, and this virus then can infect other cells then again. So, and it is not just one virus that is made. That's not a big problem. It is hundreds and thousands and millions of viruses that are, are generated uh, in uh, a cell. And this is like, like an avalanche. These si viruses then really swamp the entire cells of the body and attack them. And sooner or later, this cell will just simply die of exhaustion. It runs out of nutrients. It, it, it is just simply completely knackered and it dies. And that is why this virus is so potent. It kills the cells and it reproduces itself. And that is what leads to this enormous, what we call uh, mortality and morbidity. This virus is so dangerous. And when we say, yes, somebody has flu, uh, well, yeah, but bear in mind, flu is a massive killer. So I hope this makes sense and thank you for watching.